Have you ever wanted to restart your life? Do it all over and do it fast. Move on from things that made you feel like shit. Do you have a family who makes you feel alone? Isolated? Do you like yandere's? Well, yeah, I mean, kinda. Stick along for the ride then. I'm curious to see how long you last. 15 days. Seven candidates for your heart. Exciting, isn't it? Finding out who actually loves you. And who is a little too obsessed with you. Instead of throwing you in head first, let's start with a short scenario. Something that isn't in the game, but gives you an idea of what everyone is like. Do you know who to trust? Will you survive? Or will agony swallow you whole, bringing nothing but sorrow and misery as you recover from heartbreak? Let's see. First, it's time to figure out who you are. My name is Lion. Okay, what are my preferred relationship terms? Uh, partner, uh, marriage stage, um... I guess spouse works. Wait, what? what's this about no marriage? Uh, okay, what are my pronouns? They, them. Continue to not say for... Okay, sure, sure. Uh, yes, I would like to enable these. There are no not safe for work scenes in this demo. Do, do, okay, okay. Uh, just so you can see the option available in the full game. Got it, got it. Uh, let's see. Would you like to enable them? Yes, my body. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go for masculine terms. Wait, custom, uh, custom options. Okay, uh, let's see. I have, um, huh, <laughs> I'm gonna pick other for my genitalia. As always, I have chest. Um, I typically wear boxers, I guess. Uh, what do, okay, what do you like being called during sex? Um, degradation, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I absolutely love this uh, option. Let, let's go for that. But then again, then again, I mean, I I, I love I love being a um a cum dump, uh, as some of you may call it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just gonna go with a classic. Yeah. Now that you've told me who you are, it's time to wake up. You have a busy day ahead of you. Friday, January tenth. <laughs> It's time to get up for the day. End of the week, last day of work until a Monday. Normally you'd get to rest a little bit, but your phone is blowing up. It won't stop. God damn it. You grab your phone as though it can stop the person from messaging you. Rubbing your eyes, you check the text. It's your manager from work and your little sister. And your best friend. Well, I'm certainly popular this morning. You check the messages to see what's going on. Assalamu alaikum. Need you to come in early if you can, baby doll. Got a surprise shipment today and we're pretty busy. You reply, yeah. They at least deserve a reply. You shoot back a reply and she begins typing shortly after. Mashallah. Looks like the shipment was delayed until the end of the day. They forgot the box. Yeah. I'll see you when you come in. Your phone pings again and she sends you a smiley face and a thumbs up emoji in response. Well, that solves that. You close the message and go to the next text. Your adopted little sister. Miss you. When are you visiting? I'm due in less than five months. I need you. My emotional support non-binary... I mean... I mean, you could just call me your emotional support NB. That, that works too, my guy. It was followed by a string of emojis. Hot, some baby emojis. Uh, do you reply? Uh... I'll see her soon. Why not? I mean, although she broke my heart and betrayed me in the worst way possible, I shall be a good sibling. You love her to death, but she's incredibly clingy. A short and simple text back with an obligatory heart emoji tells her that you'll visit her soon, but you just woke up. She sends a wall of hearts and sparkles back. Yeah, I really miss her. Can't believe she had to go out of state for a doctor's office. The final text. Your childhood best friend. Someone who has known you for your entire life. So, bitch! I got out of work! Uh, wanna have a movie night? Yeah, that's definitely right. 
Uh, do you reply? Uh, yeah, yeah, you did. Dead, but, but, uh, yes, he'll hang out later in the week. Yeah, but you don't want to hang out. No, I'll hang out later in the week. Oh, man, it's been a while. Excitedly schedule a hangout with your closest friend, and your day feels a little brighter. With your messages cleared, you looked out the window. It was slightly open again, like usual. One day, I'll call my landlord to deal with that. One day. The day was not today. When your phone chimes again, an unknown number that only says, Little tough. I miss you. Your stomach churns and you block it. As you sit up, you can feel an ache in your bones that could only ever come from a retail job. And also, you left your employer and where you work, it was still a retail job that kicked your butt. You get up and get dressed. You still got plenty of time before work, so you head to the kitchen. There's a scent of breakfast as your roomie Chris is cooking. When you turn the corner, you see him in his usual frat boy wear. Oh, hey, good morning, dude. His smile was blinding. His airhead himboness never faltering. It was almost cute, if it weren't for the fact that he was burning his food. Uh, Chris, you're burning your eggs. He glances down and panics for a second, quickly taking the pan off of the stove and sliding his eggs onto the plate. Looking like a dejected puppy, he looks over at you. Sorry, I was thinking about my new classes this semester. Busy schedule. Looks like he's more comfortable in English now after being here for a few years. Oh yeah, Chris is uh Chris is Russian, I believe. Right. Are your games for this season done or Yeah, it actually finished up last month. I just didn't get around to telling you since uh that happened. Um He shifts on his feet and looks a little awkward for a moment before changing the subject. Also, like I I don't think I can pull off the accent. Uh, I'm probably just gonna switch back to like uh, the surfer boy voice, which I was going for just now. So yeah, let, let's just go for that. I'll still be out of the house pretty often. I have to keep up my physique. It took me a long time to build my muscles. His laugh is sweet as he grins. He's a big guy and a good linebacker. Plus, he's surprisingly smart. I will never get over the fact that you told me your major. You never asked till last month. Yeah, but you could have told me that the reason you study so much is because you're a health major. He looks sheepish. For someone who is socially oblivious, he's academically incredibly... but Incredible. Incredible. Well, it's not like I'm in med school yet. I still have to finish my bachelor's before I start. You open the fridge and grab something you can eat on your way to work as you let out a small laugh. You're too modest. I am? Yeah, but I have to go to work after I eat, so I'll see you when I see you. He gives a smile, and his cheeks are tinted a soft pink. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm headed to the gym with my frat later. With that, you head off your apartment and downstairs. As usual, the building is pretty empty. And when you reach the ground floor, you can smell the air of the cool morning. Some days, when it's a quiet, bright morning like this, your town doesn't feel as empty. It doesn't feel as smothered in silence. When you arrive at your work, you can see a manager smiling at a customer who leaves with a big bag of chocolate. The smell of sweets is enticing as always, but it's familiar enough that you don't want to eat them all anymore. Mashallah, doll, you're here earlier before I expected. She looks down and let out a small gasp when she sees the time. Goodness, looks like the time has gotten away from me today. I'm glad to see you. It looks like the rush just ended. Oh, I came here just in time. Also, I'm glad I texted you this morning. It makes me glad that you were so willing to reply at such an early time. You don't have to. She gives a familiar, warm, sincere smile. It always makes you feel warm inside. There's like... They are like a breath of fresh air. Is there anything pressing I can get started on, or would you like me to just hold down the fort while you get to paperwork? She taps her chin and thought for a moment before they grin and motion to the cash register. I'm on a roll right now, so I'll keep busy. Feel free to settle in at the register. No need to stress out too much when you just got here. Once you're behind the desk, you wave her off as she heads into her office. They've been a lot more happy lately. Most likely due to their little brother getting a huge scholarship. 
You lean against the desk and watch as people walk by the chocolate shop. A few stopped in and bought things, but it really was a lot slower than you expected. After your lunch break, you saw a familiar face in the distance. There's the trio. You turned to the register and began to type in their typical orders, since by this time you knew them by heart. Those three always ordered the same thing. The bell rung, and you could hear three pairs of footsteps draw closer to your counter. But you looked up. Hey, you three! My dear sugar snap, could you not even greet us this chilly morning? The tall punk was being dramatic again, and grinned mischievously at your unamused gaze, then let out a laugh. You know, you enter like that every time. Grab your chocolates! It's cute, though! The cute goth girl piped up, shaking Ezra's shoulder slightly. Also, you could use some new lines, Ezra. I could, but I actually do have to bounce it a bit. I was just stopping in to say hello. Yeah, Ezra's got a work meeting to attend to, so it's just me and Sammy today. You know what I want, hon? Yeah, yeah. He smiled at you, adjusted the items on the till to remove Ezra's. As much as they were a frequent customer, they were also your friend. He ended up leaving while you were doing so, but not without a quick goodbye. Two huge floods, Blair and Ezra. Then the shy scholar, Sammy. They've been coming to the shop long enough that when some rough stuff happened in your life, they offered to take you out and help you feel better. Honestly, they're great friends. Always warm, always welcoming. And they're an attentive... They are an attractive trio. Each of them had their charms. Blair was a goth programmer. The dream of any gamers. Sammy was an academic with many skills and a love for poetry, which gave them away with words and makes anyone's heart melt. And honestly, Sammy is the absolute cutest. I love them. And Ezra, well, he's tall, mysterious, flirtatious, strong. But above all, he always takes time out of his busy schedule for those he cares about. Nowadays, he found himself surrounded by lovely people. When just a month ago... You're doing that thing again, where you stare off into space as if you're giving exposition in some novel. That, don't, don't call me out like that, okay? The audience needs to know exactly what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking right now is, when can I smash Sammy? When can I do that? <laughs> you alright? You blink for a second. Huh? Wait, what was I just doing? Sorry, I probably look like Demise Record, huh? You sure did. Everything okay? Yeah, I just woke up. I just got woken up by my phone this morning. Must be a little more tired than I thought. Ah, that's the worst. You had to sleep on your laptop sometimes. Hey, a girl's gotta work. If I happen to fall asleep on the grind, that just shows how hardworking I am. He let out a soft laugh as the two began to bicker over Blair's sleeping habits. They grabbed their chocolates and come back to the counter with a smile. After you let your friends check out, uh, you can see a few more customers trickling in, so your chats were cut short for the day. Bess ended up grabbing Blair to ask her for some help with a tech issue she was facing, so they ended up staying at the shop for a few more hours. During your lunch break, you got a few texts. As you ate your lunch, you read a text from your little sister that was filled with her bubbliness. You could practically hear her as you read it. Hey! I got word from my doctor that I'd be able to get on a plane later this month. Do you think I could crash at your place? Love you! It was followed by a string of hearts and sparkles. You finish your lunch and check your notifications one last time before opening Steph's text. I'll be dropping by tomorrow at around noon if that's cool. After exchanging a few messages with them, you felt excited at the idea of hanging out with them. It's been too long. After getting back to work, you cleaned up your lunch and sighed. That 30-minute break felt like only three minutes. Your hands hurt from how much clacking away you had to do today, and you desperately wanted to leave the register. It was an old-fashioned one that kept up the theme of the shop, but it needed a lot of memorization and typing to work. No barcode scanner. Only item numbers. Sometimes you wish for better tech, but when Blair finally came out of Bess's office, you realized you were glad for the lower tech. Everything alright? Looks like my keyboard has been acting up for a while, and I never caught it, so I'm not sure how many product orders I'll need to double-check. 
Oh, damn. Well. The sound of a truck pulling up in front of the building stopped you in your tracks. I can go get the boxes while you do that, then. No paperwork for you today. No thanks! Would you be a doll and really do that for me? Thank you. My old lady bones are aching today. You're not even 30, Bess. But I'm almost there. The two women laugh, and Sammy can be seen reading a book in one of the aisles. You head outside and sign some papers acknowledging the shipment has been received. And you go to check that all the boxes are there. Maybe this was a bad idea. That's a lot of boxes. Shake your head. You... You grab a few of the smaller bins and take them to the storage room. You repeat this for a few more trips before you only have medium and large boxes left. Your eyes scan the labels to see which one would be the lightest based on content. Then you spot one that would be good. As you reach up to grab the box, you hear something snap. By the time you look up, you can't react fast enough to catch the falling box. That! My face! My face! You squeeze your eyes shut and brace for the pain. And wait. You hear a soft, low chuckle that could only be from one person. Damn, Sugar Snap. It's a good thing I got out of my meeting early, huh? I guess I'm not the only thing that fell for you. I go, no, no, Ezra, Ezra, no, no. Also, like, that would have been a perfect opportunity for a CG. I am just saying, like, seeing Ezra, like, hovering over us uh, with the box in his hand would be so hard. I want to see that. I want to see that point of view, please. There he was, holding the box that almost crushed your skull. In all his way too tall glory at a whopping six foot five, you were just... I almost died and you still want to flirt with me? When is it a better time? Literally any time! You couldn't tell if your cheeks were flushed from the, adrenaline, from the adrenaline or from his words, but either way, you definitely could feel heat on your face. Yeah, I guess you're right. His chuckle is soft and deep as he places the box down. Are you alright? Looking at your hands, clutching the box that you almost went into the afterlife with, you want to answer snarkily, but there was a sincerity in his voice that felt warm. Yeah, thanks, Ezra. Anytime, sugar. There was commotion from inside the shop, and three people rushed out, as opening the door and rushing over to you with a wordy expression. Blair close behind. My goodness, you're right, baby doll. Did you get hurt? I saw the box falling and came out as fast as I could. A little too late, Bess. Like, I would have been, I would have been like a flat lion cake by the time you arrived. Like, goddamn. Like, you're gonna have a new special on the menu and that, uh, that would have been like creme de la lion? I, I don't know. I have no idea what, like, what you would serve me with or how would you choose to serve me. Your manager was probably the best you ever had. Always worrying about you and wanting you to feel comfortable. A slow smile crept up on your face as Blair pushed Ezra out of the way and gave you a look over. Did this giant punk step on your toes? I saw he cut the box, but are you okay, honey? A flash of pink hair catches your gaze as Sammy watches you from behind the group, an anxious expression on their face. I'm okay, I'm okay, jeez. You guys act as if I'm more fragile than glass. Well, in the previous demo, yes I was. But I appreciate you all coming to check on me. I'm alright. Just a little shaken. A little shaken was an understatement. You haven't been in the face of death before. Sure, you've had scary situations, but this happened so quickly, your life couldn't even flash before your eyes. Ezra inspects the vo- Ezra inspects the box and frowns. Hey, Bess. Did you order 300 staple- STAPLERS?! They turn around and look what he's reading on the box. No, I did not. We ordered three staplers since we needed new ones. Did you almost get killed by a typo? What? How do they expect me to carry a box of 300 heavy-duty staplers? Don't ask me. Ask the quality assurance team who didn't wonder why a chocolate shop ordered 300 staplers. I feel like that's definitely a possible lawsuit. Unfortunately, it's not, but... I'm glad you're okay, Lion. While Blair and Bess start to look over the order paperwork to see if anything was afoot, Sammy and Ezra keep you company while you try to calm down. Do you want to go home? I'm sure Bess will let you since you almost just 
uh, died. Ezra is reading the box still as he fiddles with his snake bites. If each of those staplers are almost a pound, that's around 270, 300 pounds? That's incredibly dangerous. I'm glad I, I I'm really glad I got it when I did. With those words, you sort of zoned out for the rest of the interactions. I really could have died to a frickin' stapler! <laughs> you vaguely recall nodding along and giving a half-hearted answer to your friends and manager. She sent you home early. This music's new! I don't remember this from the previous demos, this is new. I like it. As you open the door to your apartments, you remember this morning, waking up to a bunch of texts. There's a subtle memory that you were going to hang out with your friend when you spot someone familiar standing in your living room. Oh, no. Your blood goes cold. How could you have forgotten about him? Your hands tremble as you step back and reach for the door handle. Hello, my little dove. No! 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 Get it! No! 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 So, how do you feel? Do you know what you'll do when your family betrays you? When someone cheats on you and breaks your trust? You can find out in the full game. Because in Restart Heart, it's messy. Complicated. Painful. You decide who you love. Oh! Damn! Okay, I am pounding everyone! Okay, can, can, can I- can I smash them all? Can, can I catch them all like a Pokemon? <laughs> if you even love at all, you get to choose how it ends. Whether it be in love, in friendship, bah! or in blood. IN BLOOD! HELL YEAH! I hope you make good choices. Nope! <laughs> I'm gonna make the worst choices. I am going to make absolutely horrible choices and there's nothing you can do about it, developer. <laughs> I hope you don't regret what you've done. I... I won't. I don't think I will. <laughs> Consequences will follow you. Well, let them come! Cause I am more than prepared to take it all in the face! Everything matters. Everything. Good luck. Damn! Alright, so... That was the Restart Heart Demo Remake. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. I think that this is definitely a lot more compelling than the previous demos we played. The previous demos, it felt like, you know, it felt episodic. Like, every day you wake up and you go on a different date, um, you meet different characters, you get to know them a little better. But in this one, it's a lot more story-focused and, like, there's a lot more context into, like, uh, the world you're in, like, the various relationships you have. And I feel like that's a lot... I, I feel like that choice of a change is definitely going to make the story so much better. Because, yeah, also, I would love to get to know the characters a little better. Like, that's all secondary to, like, actually, like, progressing the story in a way that's going to be, like, interesting in a way. And I can't wait for the full game to be released. It's coming out later this year if everything goes to plan. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.